So if you haven't heard what's been going on, there is something that is being deemed the Vox Adpocalypse, and it all started with a feud between Steven Crowder and Carlos Maza, all right? And I'm very conflicted about this situation, but I wanted to make a video to kind of discuss this as a YouTube creator and try to see what's really going on. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I love engaging with all of you beautiful people out there, so make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul, all right? For those of you who haven't gotten the memo, I'm going to briefly explain what this Vox Adpocalypse is, how it started and all of that, all right? So you have Steven Crowder, who is a conservative comedian and commentator, all right? I use comedian because comedy is subjective. I don't like the guy, but anyways, but keep that in mind as I go through this video, all right? Then you have Carlos Maza. I don't know much about him, but he is also a journalist. He works for Vox, and Steven Crowder has made a bunch of videos debunking Carlos Maza's videos. Now, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that Steven Crowder has used racial as well as homophobic slurs directed at Carlos Maza while criticizing him. So Carlos Maza, he has become a very loud voice on Twitter and pretty much got YouTube's attention to look into this and he wanted to de-platform Steven Crowder, all right? And basically YouTube sided with Steven Crowder and said, listen, I know what he said might've been hurtful to you, but we are not going to take him off the platform. Well, since then, and Philip DeFranco talked about this and it's actually really just bad timing, but YouTube actually just sent out a statement talking about how a lot of channels who are offensive and you know, um, they go against the anti-bullying and harassment policy, they are being demonetized. And as of right now, Steven Crowder has been demonetized. And I think they also mentioned that there's no longer access to one of his shirts that is offensive, all right? So let's talk about this. And I just want to start out by saying two things, all right? Like I mentioned before, I am not a fan of Steven Crowder. All right, I'm not a fan of Steven Crowder, so that's that's one thing. The second thing is, I, you know, not that it's any of your dang business, but I lean more to the liberal side, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? But as I'm seeing this go down, like, it's a scary situation, all right? And I guess where I've been at with this is that I don't like what Steven Crowder said. I don't think somebody on that kind of a platform should be saying those things. I think he he crossed a line when it goes, you know, from like comedy into like bullying and saying these things. Like, it's just not what you do, especially when you're a public figure like that. So I don't agree with any of that stuff that he said, all right? Now, that's on a personal level. The thing is, on this platform, and because of freedom of speech, I do respect his right to say that. Like, I think the guy's a dick for everything that he said directed at Carlos Maza, but I do not think that he should be deplatformed for saying it, all right? And the thing is, is that when this was kicking off and YouTube first sided with Steven Crowder, Carlos Maza, he's been all up on Twitter and he retweeted some stuff. And one of the things that he retweeted, I believe, it, it was somebody saying, hey, YouTube, I'm confused because YouTube was saying what Steven Crowder said may have been hurtful. And in their anti-bullying and harassment policy, they have a line that says content that might be hurtful to somebody else, right? And here's the thing, like, when I look at this, when you have that kind of language in any kind of policy, it gets tricky, all right? Because hurtful, something deemed as hurtful is very, subjective. It is extremely subjective, okay? What might be hurtful to one person is not hurtful to another person. I'll use myself as an example, all right? I have very thick skin, all right? And not just because I'm overweight. See, I can even make fun of myself. I have very thick skin, but there are other people who would be offended by the same comments that I, I receive. So two different people, same experience, right? but one gets offended, one doesn't. So it's very subjective. Now, the other thing is, is like when looking at this, 
it is safe to say that YouTube is trying to get this into their algorithm, all right? YouTube does not have the manpower. Nobody, no company on earth has the manpower to manually review everything. And that's what's scary, all right? Because a bunch of YouTubers have come out today, I have not checked out their content, so I don't know how offensive it might be, but YouTube does not have the manpower to manually check everything. So it, I would assume that they're teaching their algorithm to scan for certain words or phrases and things like that. And then a lot of people are being demonetized. So um, some of these emails have gone out and what it looks like is that people get demonetized. And then they have to reapply for the YouTube partner program in 30 days, all right? But again, when it comes to free speech, it's like, I might not like what you say, but I respect your right to say it. So when it comes to bullying and har harassment, I, I, get, I get why people want Steven Crowder to be punished even harsher. And like Carlos Maza has been talking about how YouTube is like promoting bullings and bullying and all these other things. And it's like, here's the thing. I don't think anybody's talking about. Just a couple weeks ago, Jake Paul made a video confronting the cyber bully Cody Ko. All right? There was a massive, massive reaction to that. Everybody's saying like, no, Cody Ko is not a bully. You're being a hypocrite, Jake Paul. Cody Ko is a comedian. He's joking around and everything like that. But when we're looking at what's happening right now, think about it. The question is, if Jake Paul raised enough of a stink as being one of YouTube's largest creators and saying, no, Cody Ko is bullying me. This is harassment. Cody Ko keeps making videos about me. This is harassment. Would Cody Ko get demonetized because Jake Paul's perception of what was happening was bullying? You see what I mean? It is all about perspective. And this is scary to a creator like myself. Like, I am a commentary channel. All right, just like many, many, many other commentary channels. So not only people like Cody Ko, but look at, you know, Drew Gooden, Danny Gonzalez, Jarvis Johnson, you know, Leon Lush, Elvis the Alien, Bionic Pig, everybody, all right? Now, look at the amount of times they've talked about different creators, um, Bionic Pig, he talks about musicians, and all of that. Like, imagine if Lele Pons started going after these commentary channels saying, this is bullying, this is harassment, YouTube, I want you to do something about it. You see what I mean? Like, what if, what if Five Minute Crafts went after Jarvis Johnson? What if Troom Troom went after Danny Gonzalez? All right, I just want you all to follow me right now because again, again, I do not agree with what Steven Crowder did, but I'm conflicted about the situation because when you start to censor based on if somebody's feelings got hurt, all right, no matter what they said, like it starts to get very, very tricky because this is a subjective experience. So based on how sensitive the other person is, they might get demonetized. They might lose their primary source of income, all right? Now, don't get me wrong, when I say sensitive, like, I think Carlos Maza has every right to be upset with Steven Crowder and all of the terrible things he said. I, if I was in his position, like, if somebody was calling me, you know, racial slurs, like me just being half African American and they were on such a large platform and it was like in this kind of malicious way, I'd be like, uh, yeah, that's not cool. You know what I mean? So I can definitely empathize with Carlos Maza. But one of the issues is, and one of the issues that a lot of YouTube creators are, are having is that this is happening right now. The Vox adpocalypse is what they're calling it because when Carlos Maza, this one guy, this one guy being upset about his very specific situation, he has no problem affecting the income of thousands upon thousands, if not millions of creators who are part of the YouTube partner program because of his specific situation. Like he wants advertisers to start pulling their money. YouTube is now implementing more policies about their anti-bullying and harassment. And like I said, that just seems like weird timing, but they're also heavily enforcing it already, which is today because a lot of people are losing their monetization. So this is a very tricky situation, but I did want to share my thoughts just as somebody who not only do I do commentary, but I watch a lot of commentary. I wanted to bring up this different angle. 
You see what I mean? Especially for a lot of commentary channels or news channels who follow stories and keep making videos on the same people or the same situations, like somebody on the other end of that could deem that as bullying or harassment just because they didn't like what you said about them. So I would love to know your thoughts on this entire situation down in the comments below, all right? And I will be covering this story as more goes on with it, all right? But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, support what I'm doing here, get access to our monthly Q&A, some other perks and benefits, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.